Okay, so my name is Tom Altschuler. I'm the uh, Vice President and Group General Manager for the uh, Vehicle Vertical. Uh, and this afternoon I'm going to talk about some of our major efforts. This is actually a relatively uh, quick presentation because um, there are really two ways to go here. You either go deep into the vehicles and then I have a five-hour presentation or I, I give you a quick overview and you can capture any of the Teledyne Marine folks here, but, but specifically the vehicle team has deep knowledge about what we're doing. Uh, we have a pretty broad team. I think uh, you saw Mike Reed's presentation this morning, uh, and you can see you know, the footprints all over the globe. Uh, we got a team in San Diego doing ROVs. We have the team in Massachusetts that does some of our AUVs and some of our underwater gliding technology, and finally the team in Iceland that is really our core competency for uh, propeller-driven AUVs, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But what I think I want to do is, is give you a feel for mostly our major efforts. We have a couple of subsystems and small componentry that we're working on, and this is really a, a small sh snapshot. We, we tend to have a broad range of products under development. You know, the team has 60-plus uh, engineers working on this, so it's a pretty big effort across uh, Teledyne Marine. Um, so you can see over there, I like to show this uh, uh, star chart. It's a penta chart to me, but, but you know, I guess stars have five, five points on them also, so I'll stay with that. And over in the vehicle vertical, you can see that we have a pretty broad set of, uh, of types of vehicles we build, and, and I have another couple of charts that, that kind of highlight that. And then you'll see kind of the str strategy on where we're going. Um, so, you know, this is the, the, the cartoon that says, you know, we can work anywhere in the water column, and I'm challenged as we go forward in, with the development, we, as I said, we have an aggressive posture right now, um, that this will get more and more crowded with the different, uh, different types of vehicles that, that Teledyne Marine will offer, and, and uh, I'll probably have to have a larger display in the future as we get some of these larger vehicles and some of the greater capability that we're working on. Um, so let's jump in. So this is a slide. Mike Reed showed this this morning. Uh, we like to kind of break things into uh, at least four threads. Um, so we have a couple of different ways to look at that. Start down in the lower part of this chart, and you can see our, our ROV portfolio. This is still an inspection-type ROV portfolio, um, although as you, you begin to see, and you heard some talks earlier today, if you were in the defense uh, uh, part of the, the briefings, and you'll see it a little bit in one of the slides I have, is we're moving from a classic ROV to a lot, a lot more semi-autonomous operations, so you really have to start thinking about bringing smarts into the vehicle. Uh, we're doing that with partnerships, but we think that that's where you go. And then if you were to look at a road map, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do as you move from tethered systems to fully unmanned, uh, untethered systems. Uh, you move up and you look at some of the other tethered platforms. We do some very large towed systems. Uh, these go from the mid-water column a couple of thousand meters down to 6,000 meter uh, vehicles. And these are really integrated uh, sonar platforms. Um, and one of the things you're going to see as a common thread is for, for the team here and for, for the group, for the audience, uh, some of you are going to be the customers and that use this, and a lot of you will be the suppliers that really enable what we do. So we use Teledyne content on all these, and of course we use content for all of our partners that have come to see this, uh, that come to Teledyne Marine uh, Technology Workshop. And so if you pull aside some of the experts in the field that are here this week, you know, you can see where your componentry fits on that, where your subsystems fit on that, and how, uh, how you can help us improve these products because we are doing constant development across this. Uh, you move up into our, our, our really what we, is kind of the, the, the core of the business, which is the autonomous underwater vehicles. And those go from relatively simple systems, what, you know, you, again, discussed earlier today, the profiling floats that are moving in, in things like the Argo program, uh, 6,000 meter floats. We have a version right now that's out and being deployed. Uh, and then you go into the gliding vehicles, major glider programs. I think uh, when Arnar Steingrimson was giving a defense overview this morning, talked a little bit about some of those large programs, but major efforts with the Navy. And major goal, we really are pushing very hard to expand the capability of those types of systems. Uh, so this year we'll talk about some of that. And then, you know, our roadmap has, has very sophisticated vehicles coming out. And then you move into the, the propeller-driven AUVs that are worked on in Iceland, and you can see everything from relatively small AUVs, we're not in the mini AUV and micro AUV world right now, uh, into the, the workhorse, which is Gavi, and then up to our new 6,000 meter vehicle called Sea Raptor, and I'll give you a quick slide on that. 
and then finally up into the, uh, the surface vehicles, and that goes everywhere. I think you saw a slide that, that Williams ga gave looking at uh, one of the, Q, the new Q vehicle. We have an analog in the, uh, the Z boat, which is carrying just a different sensor suite, so the, really the focus on measuring things differently, and then up into uh, kind of the, the more classic Z boats that you'll see out in the demonstration. So across the group, we're really focused on taking these platforms, looking at the adjacencies of the platform and the core engineering skills that we think we have and the innovative engineering we have to, to expand the vehicle world. And so I kind of, before I jump into kind of specifics, I wanted to throw out a little bit. You know, we think that we're one of the broadest, most innovative teams in the world right now. You know, if we're going everywhere from towed sonar systems and, and ROVs up to surface vehicles and in a full array of of unmanned underwater vehicles and, and, and AUVs. Uh, we leverage, and I've been told, you know, keep it, my, my DOD background comes out, uh, but, but to, uh, to kind of talk and, and keep it, the acronyms limited, I, I still threw them up. Uh, so we have a pretty sophisticated, pretty heavy R IRAD process. Mike Reed mentioned the types of money that Teledyne Marine spends. The vehicle group is a very heavy user of internal research and development. Uh, over 10% of our annual revenue goes back into our product portfolio. And then we have a very aggressive contract research and development process. And that is true whether we're doing it for commercial customers or, as you'll see down, a pretty broad set of U.S. Department of Defense customers that support us. Um, so as I said, 10% of our annual, uh, annual income in my group is, is focused on new product development and then a very broad set of, of contract research and development customers, uh, some of them in the room here today. So let's talk about uh, specific technology, quickly go through some of this. Uh, try to keep it light. These slides can be very uh, 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 content rich, lots of words. Uh, but you saw this. The picture looks very familiar, except for it's yellow. Uh, we like it yellow vehicles. I got a greener one in there. I, you know, I, haven't, I haven't been able to convince Seabotics to take the, the classic yellow yet, but, but I'll work on that. Uh, but you can see this is very similar to the Q boat uh, that was shown, the 120, the 1250, really focused, just as William said, in something that is lightweight, one person portable, and really changes the dynamics of how you put a vehicle in the water to do whatever type of measurement you're doing. For this specific type one, you can put um, different types of sonars on it. We do a side scan sonar. You can put on a, uh, 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 microbathymetry type system, but the goal is really to transform from having multiple person operations to being able to fold something up, put it in the back of a relatively small vehicle, get out and operate, uh, and really changes the operational tempo of what you can do. You can see some of the features down here, you know, highlighting reduced survey time, all of those things, but it's a very exciting vehicle, and I noticed that, that it was, it's available today, so if you want to go take one home with you, please come up and, and I would be very happy to put you in touch with the ocean science team that will be really happy to, to have you walk off with a couple of vehicles. I'm not sure we have any here to, to walk off with, but they'll, they'll try. A uh, couple of things, we walked Seabotics, we're looking at subsystems that we're putting on that. So we have our core vehicle that we're working on right now, but the goal, and I said in the beginning, is to look at the transformation for command and control of the system to move to a more semi-autonomous to autonomous system. Uh, it's a big move because as you start to look at the operation, there's a huge human in the loop component to operating a vehicle. And so what you're trying to do is to put your operator, uh, th that, that, that cognitive skill of your operator, focused on key missions and not some of the simplistic things that, that, that are, uh, you know, that take the brain power but are hard to do, which is some of the flight. So by going to, and we partnered with Green Sea on this, and you can see their booth in the other room, by going to Smart Flight 2, We've really driven ourselves to a semi-autonomous system. We've used it in mine countermeasure type, type operations. We've used it in different places where what we can do is feed data into the system and fly the vehicle to where we need to do it without having the human worry about that. Uh, so it's a big benefit to that, and it is available now. As we move into the, the last Seabotics pieces, the other thing, and I think this was also talked about this morning, is really the movement to from a inspection class vehicle to, to almost a mini micro type uh, intervention vehicle, which means adding capability onto the system. Uh, whether it's a, a simple grabber, this is a new system we have, which is a, a wrist rotator, gives us multi-articulation, and it is a small multi-articulating arm. So the goal is really to bring into play the smallest, lightest weight system that goes with those very uh, robust 
human portable uh, systems. So one person can put it in the water. You've got that ability to, through the, the vision systems, you saw uh, the William talk about the different types of vision systems, the different types of lighting systems. Those go on those platforms. And now you have the ability to, to do light or micro type intervention. Um, and so this is also available now. Uh, they go into the big vehicles, and so we're doing some major efforts, and these are very, very large efforts. For those of you that have been involved in development from beginning to end of, of autonomous underwater vehicles, you realize uh, projects that take multiple years and, and significant uh, engineering skill to do that. We're building a 6,000-meter uh, system. It's called Sea Raptor. Uh, it is based on the Gavia system. Uh, which means that we're going down, we're looking at the autonomy logics coming out of the Gavia, the, the architecture is there, and yet we're moving into the next generation, which really looks at, at the type of uh, uh, communication buses we're using, how we distribute power, how we minimize the noise on the system. Uh, this system is, is provides with a, a full sonar suite. The system we're building right now has sub-bottom profile or multi-beam sonar. Uh, it has a very sophisticated obstacle avoidance sonar, has a side scan sonar system, advanced inertial gas navigation, all of those things. Uh, but the architecture is really focused on allowing us to take pieces out, take pieces back in, not the classic uh, approach to an AUV where you have to build it, manufacture it at the, at, the, at the manufacturer's site, and if you need new sensors put in, if you want to change things, it's a complete revamp of that system. This system will be modular enough to allow the end user to think about other types of sensors into that platform. And the, the multiplexer, the ability to link those sensors in to a smart, intelligent autonomy logics is, is critical. The next is uh, gliding systems. You know, we are the world's largest provider of gliders. Our largest customers is a science market in the US Navy. Uh, we are moving from our, into our third generation vehicle. Um, it is a major step forward for us because it looks at moving from a, a relatively simple product uh, to something that starts to address the core reliability issues that we think are important for long endurance uh, flight and also look at expanding the operational envelope. And so you can see that the, the G3 is looking at, at larger displacement pumps. That allows you to move faster in the water column. It allows you to deal with uh, fresh water lensing, different water properties, uh, new fin design. This is actually robust to multiple types of communication systems. So we designed the fin around the ability to adapt to the need for communications instead of the core uh, Iridium, Argos, and, 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 and free wave type uh, RF systems we have. And then we've looked at it, making the system more robust, double O-ring seals throughout the system. And finally, we're introducing a very long endurance lithium ion battery. So for those of you that are familiar with a glider, we know we typically offer either lithium batteries as a primary set or alkaline one lasts a month, one lasts a year. We're gonna be in the middle. We're gonna be able to get up to 90 days on a lithium ion system, which means you can charge the, the, the vehicle, you can actually charge the battery inside the vehicle and go back out and still get three months of operation. And finally, also this was talked about is the uh, uh, full ocean depth profiling system. So the goal, and it was talked about this morning in, one of our, the, in the plenary session by one of the keynote speakers, uh, looking at understanding the water column properties from the surface all the way down to the sea floor over 95% of the ocean. Uh, right now, the Argo program is focused on the top 2,000 meters. That's very interesting because you start to get good understanding of the top part of the water column, but that heat sequestration is really important down deep. There's a lot of energy that's stored in the deep ocean. If you're modeling to understand climate change, any kind of dynamics of the ocean, you need to understand the deep ocean. The goal here is a 6,000 meter system. We are deployed. We have customers that are using these now. It is available. It is really focused on cost effectiveness. And so you look at the types of systems, it's a full 6,000 meter rated system. We think at the end of the day, we'll have 150 to 250 profiles on a system like this. What does that do? That drives the cost of a CTD cast, if you're looking at something that simple, to under $400 a CTD cast. For the, the oceanographers, if they're in the room, if you take an oceanographic vessel, take a Seabird CTD, which is what we're putting on this as an example, and do a full ocean depth cast, you're lucky to do that in eight hours, and it's going to cost tens of thousands of $10,000, $20,000 a cast. We're now to $400 a CTD, excuse me, a CTD cast. 
we've got DO on these systems and we'll have an easy time integrating uh, the optic, optical systems, you know, fluorometers and such, and or acoustic systems. And the reason for that is, again, we're going right back to a very standard architecture that is, is very robust to adding sensors to the system. And I think that wraps everything up. That's what we're doing. Hopefully in, in two years we'll be back and we'll give you the, uh, the array of the other things that we're developing, but they're still about 18 months out. So with that, William, I think I'll, I'll let you move on. Teledyne Marine. Everywhere you look.